Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to fourth webinar of Data from Sky. I'm Lenka, and you already could meet me in some of our past webinars. This one follows a little bit on the previous one, where we introduced our Data from Sky AI platform. I showed you how easily you can process your recordings and how to get the valuable traffic insights out of it. If you didn't attend, you can find a recording on our website. But today's focus is primarily on safety. We will talk about how to evaluate the safety, it means how to identify some near collisions or how to visualize potential conflicts or dangerous spots. And I also have invited a guest speaker, traffic planner Line Laden from Kowi, our business partner in the Nordic market. Line will share with us some practical and very interesting examples and case studies from Denmark. So let's get started. First of all, why we are talking about safety? The European Union has some of the safest roads in the world. Nevertheless, more than 25,000 people still lose their lives on the EU roads every year. This is an enormous loss. On the other hand, there is a decrease of 21% compared to the year 2010. Another statistic says that in overall, only 8% of road accidents fatalities occurred on motorways, whereas 54% happened on rural areas and the rest in urban zones. Almost half of the fatalities are caused by cars, but also the vulnerable road users such as unprotected cyclists, pedestrians and motorbikers account in total of for almost half of road accident victims, especially in urban areas. Looking at these numbers, we at Data from Sky have asked ourselves, how can we help to increase the safety on the roads? We wanted to create a powerful traffic safety tool that can look at the problem from multiple angles, as an error in the behavior of an individual, but also evaluating the interactions between individual participants, like car to pedestrian or car to cyclist. We decided to look at this from a point one step ahead of the collision, and we created a tool analyzing the near collisions and risky situations. With this tool, we can quickly determine critical road safety issues for various road users, including exact locations of dangerous interactions, their severities and their frequencies. And why we need to know all of this? Um, to understand the road user behavior, identify some high-risk conflict spots, or to measure the road safety improvements if any changes were implemented. We have trained the deep neural network to detect and recognize the objects in the image with very high precision. And actually, accuracy is the key factor for evaluation of any traffic node in terms of safety. Precise bounding boxes, speed and acceleration data, as well as distance measuring or complete trajectory for each road user, that all are val valuable inputs for safety measurements. But let's show it on actual examples. What data can data from Sky safety analysis provide? For example, analysis of aggressive drive behavior thanks to trajectory driven design. Thanks to that, you can analyze each millisecond of the vehicle's path. Then offensive lane changing, or you can identify collision prone traffic hub areas or dangerous spots. You can detect short following distances and headways, and detect speeding or heavy acceleration. Safety indicators that are included in data from Sky can be determined into two main groups. The first group is analysis of individual trajectories and behavior of each road user. You can identify speeding or heavy deceleration, etc. The second group is uh, traffic conflicts between two and more road users. Here we have implemented two main indicators. First one is TTC, it means time to collision, and is defined as a time until a collision between the vehicles would occur 
if they continued on their present course at their present rates. The lower the TTC value, the greater the probability of a collision. There are different thresholds for uh, critical TTC values for different traffic situations. For an intersection, um, a TTC threshold could be about 1 to 2 seconds. In case of signalized intersections uh, with traffic lights, the range can be between 1.6 to 3 seconds. The second indicator is called PET, uh, which means post encroachment time, and it's time between the moment that one vehicle leaves the area of potential collision and the other road user arrives at that collision area. However, uh, TTC is more frequently used in practice than PET. Uh, many automobile uh, collision avoidance systems or driver assistant uh, systems have used TTC as an important warning criterion. Actually, our data from Sky Methodology has been even certified by Ministry of Transport. But let's have a look at an example of the first case, it means the analysis of telemetric data of a single road user and what happens when the car skids. For the first demo we have here this nice roundabout during the winter time and now let's compare the course of a normal passage of the vehicle at the roundabout and the course of the passage of a skidding vehicle. You can see that the vehicle number 21, this one, is slowing down while entering the roundabout and the speed is still decreasing while moving inside of the roundabout. Now we can have a look at what is happening with the speed and acceleration in more detail. For that we can use our movement dynamics graph showing us all the curves of uh, lateral acceleration, tangential acceleration or total acceleration. While entering the roundabout the car has all its wheels turned the same way and the vehicle's path follow a circle. Both lateral and tangential acceleration have a similar constant character which corresponds to the change in car speed and uh, wheel rotation. And this is because the driver is driving smoothly and you can see that he starts accelerating somewhere here while he is already uh, leaving the, the roundabout. But as opposed, uh, we have here uh, car number 24. Let's have a look at that. Car number 24 is here and you can already notice that this car is entering the roundabout in higher speed than other vehicles. It's almost in 19 km per hour and the speed is here still increasing and that itself indicates a problem, the problem which you can notice right here. But what happened exactly? Again we can have a look at the movement dynamics graph. So let's get back to the beginning uh, when the car is entering the, um, the roundabout. You can see that the lateral acceleration is rapidly increasing. That's because there is a great uh, lateral force. The big point somewhere here indicates that the driver lost the control over the car and the car went into, into a skid. The tangential acceleration is going into negative values as the car is slowing down and braking really heavily, reaching the uh, peak point somewhere somewhere here where the car almost stopped and the driver uh, takes the control over the car back. From that point um, the tangential acceleration is getting back into positive values as the car is uh, accelerating and trying to get out of the roundabout. Now we can compare uh, both graphs actually, so for this skidding vehicle and also for the, the normal vehicle that I was showing before. So as you can see here, the graphs are totally different, so here the 
changes in the lateral and tangential acceleration are really noticeable uh, moving from one peak point to another and here is the graph showing uh, the passage of a, a normal vehicle that's uh, slowing down while entering the roundabout and still slowing down um, inside of the roundabout and then uh, accelerating while leaving the roundabout. So this is a nice tool how you can compare both uh, trajectories together. So what you have seen now was an example of analyzing the telemetry data of an individual traffic participant. But now let's focus on the second group, analyzing interactions between road users and evaluating their potential conflicts. To detect potential conflicts, we use the principle of simulation and prediction of the future state. We use two methods of prediction. The first one is a linear model, a simpler variant that doesn't take into account the rotation of the vehicle's wheels nor the braking. It's used, for example, to predict the vehicle's movements on T-intersections or motorways or just as straight road sections. The second way to predict the movement of an object in a scene is based on the assumption that the object is in a turning state and it copies a circle. This principle is described by the so-called Ackermann steer model. It's more suitable for scenes such as roundabouts or curved roads and it can eliminate lots of false positive cases which can be identified as potential collision with the use of linear model. It's time to move to the second demo, showing both traffic conflict uh, techniques TTC and also PET. For the second demo, we have here a signalized intersection with little heavier traffic. Uh, let's have a look first on how we can calculate the time to collision. For that, we have a function in the menu analysis where you can set up the parameters for calculating either the time to collision, post encroachment time or even heavy braking. So let's start with time to collision. Here you can choose the movement prediction that we are we were talking about earlier in the presentation. So the first one the linear speed vector or the second one the Ackermann steer model. So I will choose the speed vector for this uh, intersection. And here you can also restrict the type, so you can calculate the TTC only with respect to cars or to bicycles, motorcycles, etc. So you can restrict even the, the class of the, of the vehicle. So let's confirm and the system will automatically calculate all the traffic conflicts. So here we have uh, the list of all calculated conflicts in the in the scene, and now we can even uh, parameterize uh, each value. So, for example, we should set the maximal value for TTC, so for time to collision. So I will choose one second to restrict the maximal value, and also the minimal value of uh, TET, which is uh, time exposed time to collision. Basically, it means the the duration of TTC conflict and I will set uh, 0.5 that's actually that what we can leave so you can see that right now we have about uh, more than 160 conflicts but using these uh, uh, filters um, or these um, parameters I can even uh, I, I still can select or filter out the conflicts and uh, leave only uh, the one, the positive uh, conflicts. So right now we have ended up with about 30 uh, conflicts in the scene, uh, which are indicated by these arrows. And the arrows are also uh, differentiated by, by colors. So uh, the red arrows indicates the, the lowest TTC and the orange one is the higher TTC so it means uh, uh, not that uh, serious uh, uh, conflict. 
The arrows are interactive, it means that you can click on that and actually the conflict will uh, get displayed, I mean the prediction of that uh, collision will get displayed in the, in the video and you can even, uh, you can even play it. So you can have a look on uh, the full course of the uh, of both trajectories and uh, the time to collision, and also the um, these bounding boxes indicates the possible uh, collision if both vehicles would uh, remain their their paths at their uh, uh, same rates. So you can see here in this example, the lowest value for time to collision is uh, 0 0.6 seconds. So in the same way, you can investigate each and every conflict that was calculated in the scene. So you can click on that and you can play it in the, uh, in the video. Another example here, again, you can go back in the video and play the full uh, scenario showing the, the minimal value of TTC and also the collision of the, of the bounding boxes. Now let's have a look on the second example and that's uh, how to get uh, post encroachment time. You will find that in the same menu for safety analysis, but now instead of time to collision, you can select to calculate the post uh, encroachment time. As we uh, explained earlier, so the PET is actually the time difference between one vehicle is leaving the area of potential conflict and the following vehicle is entering the, the same area. Again, you can restrict the types, but I will leave all uh, classes marked uh, and just confirm to calculate all the uh, potential uh, PET uh, conflicts. So here we have uh, uh, the list of uh, conflicts for PET that the system calculated. Again, these arrows are indicating the uh, potential conflict and it's interactive so you can click on that and you can investigate it in uh, in the video so let's have a look on some chosen uh, conflicts so right here uh, you can see the conflict between the vehicle 51 and 22 uh, so you can see uh, as the definition says that uh, the uh, leaving vehicle, the leading vehicle 21, 22 is uh, leaving the area of the conflict, which is here, and the car 51 is entering that zone. Uh, and the PET uh, is actually below uh, one second, so it's uh, 0 0.72 seconds that this car uh, was already in the spot of uh, vehicle 20, uh, 22. Another example, for example, uh, can be here. So you can see that both uh, uh, vehicles are uh, are driving this one of almost 20 kilometers per hour and is uh, um, going into into the direction that this vehicle number 16 was, uh, and the threshold for the PET here is uh, slightly above one one second. So this is the way how you can uh, visualize and uh, have a look on all the uh, conflict that was generated uh, by the by the system. One last thing, what you can do is you can export all of the conflicts uh, into a CSV file so that you can analyze each trajectory and the whole course of uh, the conflict. So that's one option. Or you can also visualize uh, the conflicts uh, in a heat map. So you will choose the uh, heat map overlay and choose the safety analysis. Uh, and you can display it either in a heat map or a grid map while uh, choosing the 
uh, size of the, of the tiles and uh, showing the values of the TTC. So in this way you can actually have a look on the hotspots and where on which places there were most of the conflicts and where the TTC value was the lowest. In this second example, I have shown you how to set up the parameters for two main traffic collision indicators. But now it's time to pass the word to our guest speaker, Line from Kowi. Line, I am happy to have you here and that you are going to share the experiences on how you leverage our tools for various safety studies. Okay, so thank you, Lenke. Um, my name is Line Dein Laden and I work as a project manager in Kovi within traffic planning. Uh, I'm responsible for data from Sky in Kovi, uh, in Kovi Scandinavia. And when I started working in Kovi five years ago, the cooperation between Kovi and RCE systems had just started. And it has been an absolute pleasure to be part of this journey throughout the years. And I'm very happy to do this presentation with you, Lenke. Um, right, so for those of you who don't know Kovi, Kovi is a large consulting group with offices all over the world and approximately 7,300 employees worldwide. Uh, however, our main office is in Copenhagen in Denmark. Kovi works with projects in all parts of engineering, economics and environmental science, roughly divided in, into these business units. Um, I work in a department for urban planning and traffic. So today I brought two cases of how we use data from Sky for safety studies. The first case is what we call a school analysis and it's an analysis of traffic situation around schools um, and we have carried out such analysis for more than 100 schools in Denmark. The second case is a large roundabout um, and the purpose of this study was to determine behavioral patterns in large roundabouts. Um, and studies like this we've done for uh, more than 50 roundabouts in Denmark. Right, so um, the school analysis. Um, the foundation of this kind of safety analysis is that schools usually cover quite a large area. They have multiple entrances. Uh, schools usually starts at 8 a.m. for all students. This means that most students arrive with, within approximately 20 minutes before first lessons. Um, and this often makes traffic situation these last 20 minutes upon arrival pretty chaotic. Um, Previously, you would do field studies, you would place several men on site and do observation. This means that you have no documentation and you have no one has the, the full overview um, of the traffic situation. So what we did was that we started using drones combined with data from Sky. Um, and what that made us able to do was that we could count the uh, vehicles, bicycles, cars and pedestrians, we were able to detect if there were any problematic areas or spots, could be parking areas, kiss and ride areas, etc. We were also able to determine the use of uh, pedestrian crosses, um, find any near misses and most importantly uh, we had very solid documentation for use afterwards. So all of this um, actually is the basis for suggesting change to improve safety around schools. Um, right, so this, this case is a uh, school in a large city in, in Denmark. And as you can see, 
this school has multiple entrances. Um, it actually has entrances on all sides. <laughs> And um, the municipality wanted an overview of the uh, traffic situation in regards to means of transportation, use of parking lots, um, which area do parents use to drop off kids, uh, etc. So we made a drone recording for around 25 minutes right before school started. Um, and then we had each of in the recording uh, tracked and that made it possible to do a visualization like this now this these are all the tracks of pedestrians throughout the recording so each line or track represents uh, one pedestrian um, in the recording and this gives you a nice overview of how pedestrians arrive to school you can tell that this uh, lane uh, down here is fairly used, uh, fairly often used, um, and you can also tell that the pedestrian tracks starting here um, at the cars, uh, they're all students uh, being dropped off by car, and the same goes for goes for this parking lot. Um, and in this area, actually, there's a there's a bus stop. So these tracks are usually uh, students uh, arriving by bus. Uh, now, obviously, you're able to do a count of these tracks. Um, so what I did was I, I grouped pedestrians and bicycles into the same category. Uh, and then I did a count of all uh, the tracks passing these gates. So um, it becomes very clear that this lane um, is uh, very often used by both pedestrians and bicycles. Um, and what's also interesting is that if you have a closer look at this parking lot, you can see that the number of vehicles entering and exiting uh, this parking lot is close to the same. And this means that the, the, the parking lot is not used for long-term parking, um, but it's is rather used to to drop off uh, uh, students, um, as we saw on the slide before, um, and that actually makes this uh, parking lot uh, interesting in regards to traffic flow and safety. So we had a closer look at it, um, and here uh, here are all the tracks <laughs> for from the recording uh, throughout the video. So uh, red tracks are vehicles, uh, blue tracks are bicycles, and uh, yellow tracks are pedestrians. And what you can see here is that you have uh, quite a, a lot of uh, conflicts on uh, in this area. You have uh, lots of tracks uh, crossing each other, um, and you have uh, vehicles reversing whilst um, Bicyclists are passing really close by. Um, so this actually does create, um, I wouldn't say a near miss, but some situation to be aware of. Um, and I just picked this one example of uh, bicyclists passing by here, and then you have um, vehicles uh, reversing and trying to leave the parking lot. Uh, so I'm going to play the video now. Um, and as you can see, the bicycle is actually hesitating and then makes a, a turn to avoid the car, and then another bicycle is coming. Um, several cars are reversing. So this means that. This area um, is somewhat problematic in regards to in regards to safety. Um, so, in in general, by using data from sky and drones, you get a really nice overview, and you get very nice documentation of problematic areas, and you're able to make visualizations and video recordings showcasing relevant incidents. Um, like this. Right. 
Um, so the second case I brought uh, is a large roundabout. And the issues regarding large roundabouts are usually poor traffic flow and a relatively high number of accidents. Um, the scope of this project was to get a better understanding of behavioral patterns in large roundabouts and to create suggestions for improvement of traffic flow and safety. Um, so again, we used drones and data from Sky and what we were able to get uh, from that was uh, we were able to do a very specific tra traffic count. Um, we got a full origin desti destination uh, matrix, which is essential for making any changes to geometry on a location like this. Um, down here, uh, you, are, you actually have uh, the average speed visualized. So, um, as you can see, the speed is actually significantly higher in the left lane in the roundabout uh, compared to the right lane. Um, and the, the issue of uh, having two lanes in, in the roundabout and only one exit uh, was also a, a point of focus in this, um, in this analysis. Um, and uh, they, uh, they wanted to, um, to see if this would result in any near misses. Um, so the the client also wanted to to take a closer look at uh, at speed throughout the roundabout. So what we did was that we placed um, different gates to do detailed speed measurements, um, separating right and left lane whenever possible. Um, and the result is shown uh, down here, and it's basically showcases the same as uh, we saw in the last slide, that the speed in the left lane is significantly higher than uh, in the right lane, or through the roundabout. Um, and it's uh, based on these data, it's actually also possible to look at the variation of speed for each gate, if you're interested in, in, in that. Um, now the other focus was based on uh, on lane selection. So this is a visualization of lane selection um, depending on uh, whether you enter the the roundabout in the left lane or in the right lane. So here vehicles entering in the left lane, you can tell that most of them um, pass almost all the way through the roundabout and exit the, this way. And if you enter the right lane, then most of the uh, vehicles exit the first roundabout, uh, the first exit. Uh, so um, actually, it would also be possible to only visualize one um, one traffic flow. So it could be, for instance, the yellow one. Um, and then you could tell uh, where the lane change happens. Uh, is it close to the exit or is it... Is it earlier? Um, and this is actually interesting because what we found was that um, most of these lane change happened fairly close to the exit, and that result in uh, in uh, that actually fairly often results in near misses. Um, so we use the time to collision tool uh, in data from Sky to search for near misses. Um, and I brought one example of such a case. Um, so uh, keep an eye on this uh, on this uh, black car, and uh, yeah, as you can see, it's, it it will exit the roundabout around here. Yeah. So uh, this could easily have gone wrong, but uh, luckily it didn't. Uh, so. In, in the case of this roundabout, it is problematic to have a two-lane roundabout with only one lane exit, because then you have several situations like this. Um, and again, what you gain from using drones and data from Sky in a case like this is documentation. You also get a very solid data foundation for further work.
um, and you are able to choose to dive into uh, and extract data for speed, lane change, um, further investi investigation of near misses, uh, etc. Um, right, so these were the two cases I brought for this short session. Uh, thank you for your time. I hope this gave you an idea of how to use data from Sky in traffic studies. Thank you, Lina, for showing here all of the interesting use cases and how the tools can be used in real projects. But the time is moving fast. We are approaching to the end of our session. Uh, we have here some questions that occur during the first part of the presentation. So I will address some of them here and the rest will be answered as usual after the webinar via, via emails. The first question we have here is what else can data from Sky measure? Um, as you could partly see in uh, both of the demos, uh, data from Sky provide m many data such as acceleration or deceleration of each road user, actual speed, headways in seconds or meters. But apart from these safety values, data from Sky can provide standard classified counts turning movements or origin destination metrics, various reports and statistics. You can actually try that all of that by your own on our cloud platform ai.datafromsky.com. The second question we have here is uh, what is the ideal video for safety analysis? In general, an aerial video taken from 90 degree perspective is the ideal position. In that case, the accuracy of the detected safety values is the highest. And the last question uh, from the first part, can you analyze uh, car to car or also car to person safety indicators? As you could see from the demo, yes, our tool can uh, analyze all of the interactions within the same group, it means car to car, but also among the different users such as car to pedestrian or uh, car to bicycle. And that's all for today's webinar with the topic of safety analysis. I hope it was beneficial for you and if there are any projects that you are working on and you would like to include the safety analysis, just don't hesitate to contact us with inquiry and our whole team is happy to help you with your project. Thank you everyone for joining our session and see you on some future webinars.